Funky Politics. I'm the first African American elected mayor. Right. However, there have been two preceding mayors. Shackleford uh, was one. Shackleford was one. Uh, and Charles Bussey right. was the other. Uh, but they both were city directors. They were not Ooh, elected mayors. Oh, I see. They were just appointed from their peers to become mayor. You are listening to Funky Politics, powered by the Kazuki Network. Man. I think my name is still DC. I'm sitting here with the two best hosts, uh, co-hosts of Funky Politics you could ever have, Doc Ward and Tasha Rainmaker Downey. What up? How y'all doing? Good to hear. I never understood. Yeah. I mean, I missed the staff meeting when they started calling you the Rainmaker. Rainmaker. Yeah, I didn't miss that. Missed it. I mean, I like, I love the name, but I want us to understand why. So I work in philanthropy. Okay. Where we but give away mm-hmm. and we get. Money. Okay. That's rain. So that is what we call making it rain. Okay. Okay. So mm-hmm. you're just like a thunderstorm man. Basically. <laughs> can we call you monsoon? You can. Whatever. Hurricane. Cyclone. T- cyclone T. Mm-hmm. So I like cyclone. Hey, no, wait a minute. There was a cyclone, like cyclone that went through the British Isles here not like long ago, y'all. T. You can call me I cyclone. Like, I, what, what, what was it called? Cyclone T? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Cyclone T. <laughs> You spell it T R U M P. I take it. This guy just he just ran through the British <laughs> Isles, came over to France, and man, I think he's back home now. Yeah, yeah. but the big baby showed up for oh, him God. in London. They had the blimp. Wasn't that weird? The big baby. Trump. Somebody stabbed it. Somebody stepped, and the thing still flew. <laughs> Lord, he just this guy can't get a break, man. He Is can't it, get a break. He didn't deserve they, they a break. They stabbed the baby balloon. He did. <laughs> He, he doesn't deserve a problem. Like this, this. But you know what, though? As much as people talk about the president, those yeah. that don't like him, detract from him. I, I really don't. This show. I don't care. We, yeah, well, that's not this if, show. It's not a show it. if we want it to be. We're not going to sugarcoat anything here either. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is I really hate that for the office of the president. Sure. Because the president of the United States is the ruler and protector of all, supposedly, all that is free. Yeah. The free world. All that is free and that's all right. that is good in the world. And when we have that type of symbolism under attack, it really is, and I hope all Americans understand it, really is, really is a serious issue. And so we need to be mindful of that when we go to the polls. Not tell you who to vote for, but just tell you that this office is bigger than the person. Yeah, and man. we need to be mindful of that. Well, you know, speaking of that, Tasha, there is an office a holder that will be visiting with us today here on Funky Politics. Yeah. And I think Docs has coined it as King of the Rock. Is that right? right? King of La Rock. Petite. Oh, King of Rock. I thought yeah. it was King of the Rock. We're getting the a piece La of the rock. We're getting a piece, La La of, the rock. Getting a piece rock. of the rock today. Tasha, I'm not who, talking about prudential. I'm oh. giving it's, 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 it's La Petite Rock. Who we got? Who we got? It is, the, it is Frank Scott, the mayor of Little Rock, Arkansas. Is that Frank Scott Jr. or Frank Scott Sr.? Frank Which Scott Jr. Mayor of Little Rock, Arkansas. The right, the reverend, alumnus of the University of Memphis. Won't he do it? Jesus, won't you do it right here on Funky Pops? Won't you do it on? I tell you what, do it, Doc. Before we do this, we, we'll be right back to talk to the one and only, the Honorable Frank Scott Jr., uh, the Mayor of the City of Little Rock, right here on Funky Politics, powered by the Kazukiya Network. Riffin on jazz. I'm Howard Robertson, one of your hosts for Riffin on Jazz. Riffin is your weekly visit with friends where we dive all in to that classic African American art form called jazz. So don't miss Riffin with me and my man Melvin Massey every week on your favorite broadcast and podcast platforms. Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! What you talking for? You're listening to Funky Politics, powered by the Kaduki Network. I am DC sitting here along with, man, the Funky Politics crew. Yes. Tasha really Rainmaker right. Down. This is what I call a rainmaker. Mm-hmm. She's no, making it rain? Don't tell people why. Don't right, tell I, people I ain't going to say nothing. This is a holy show. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Doc Ward, what's up, Doc? Funky Politics, where we only deal with those that keep it real. We only fight for those who do it right. And if you are real and you are right, we will. Funk with you. Oh. We gonna funk with you. I like you. the way you do that. That's boy. what we gonna do. That's gonna funk it up in here. Well, you we ready to make it rain? I'm ready. We got a funky Bring person in town from Arkansas. I'm not saying he's funky because he's from Arkansas. He's <laughs> funky because he's a deep brother. He's a deep brother. The, the land one and of only. opportunity. The honorable. There you go. 
Frank Scott Jr., yeah, you the mayor of Little Rock, Arkansas. Welcome to Funky Politics, sir. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much, D.C., Doc, and Tasha, the rainmaker. So mm-hmm. what are you making the rain oh, with? We're going to keep this show on, on the, on the <laughs> tracks of the train, about to get off the tracks. We're Hold trying on. to stay with our FCC <laughs> regulations. <laughs> I understand. We better understand. get out my, your way. My day job is in, is in philanthropy. <laughs> all right. So. All right. <laughs> Dollars. Hey, look. And hey, cents. mayor, it's giving. <laughs> She's giving. Doing it. Dollars and cents. There you go. She's giving. Money doing coming. <laughs> Money does come her way, Lord. Sometimes Rain in dollars like, and sometimes in flags. Like man but we appreciate man. tithes and offerings. So it's oh, yeah. praise the Lord. What you got, Doc? You got some bird on your the, chest the, there. What's the up with you? The church are open. Oh, Lord. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. See, always. I know and, y'all got this funky man up in here, boy. From man, and Lord, you know what? Man. He's not just funky. He's huh? historical. This yes. is the first, first. first African-American elected mayor in the history of La Petite Roche. Otherwise known the as Little Rock. Little Rock. Oh, he's been doing a little research. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, my, mom's from, my mom's from Arkansas. So All right. It's right. a big rock. Lapa T. Roche. <laughs> yeah. But they I thought that rock. was red stick. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's somewhere. That's, that's you Baton thought, Rouge. You thought there was some dish Baton with some bacon Rouge. on it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, yep. you all the way here in Memphis, all Tennessee. Yep. Is this yeah. something new to you, this this political office that you're holding? Well, I've, I've been blessed to have a, a varied amount of experiences in uh, both the public sector and the private sector, but... Uh, just kind of a bit of my journey, born, raised, and I still reside in Southwest Little Rock, which is one of the right. uh, low-income areas of our city. Um, and so it's just truly a testament to be from that particular area and to uh, have risen uh, to the uh, be the leader, the chief elected leader of the nation, the state's capital uh, city. But born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, did not want to go to college, uh, but through a praying mother uh, who had uh, my older sister at the age of 14, uh, wow. she demanded that I was going to go to college. Uh, and so I ended up at the University of Memphis. And so I spent four years Praise here the Lord, in the city. The I know you, some of y'all may call it Memphis, Memphis State, State, but you kind of yeah, date Memphis yourself. Memphis State when I was there. Well, that means you're kind of old because we understand <laughs> when that, that or changes. Ti- or Tiger High. Yeah, or Tiger High. <laughs> <laughs> Are you insulting my fine university, sir? <laughs> but no, I, I love the University of Memphis. I'm actually in town uh, receiving a outstanding alumnus award, one of five individuals. And wow. it's a truly mm-hmm. honor to be here sure. uh, back in what I call my second home. Uh, but graduated from the University of Memphis with a business degree, uh, came back home to Little Rock, Arkansas, spent a couple of years as a distribution manager. Uh, then I kind of had my quarter life crisis and decided <laughs> that uh, business at that particular realm I didn't want to pursue. And so I began to uh, overnight weekends manage uh, a shift. And then during the week campaign for then Attorney General Mike Beebe, who was right. running for yeah, governor, right. he ultimately won in 2006. I joined his administration as a policy advisor and rose to become his director of intergovernmental affairs and deputy director of policy. I went to school at night to get my MBA at the University of Arkansas Little Rock. I decided to go back into business. I became an uh, executive in finance uh, with First Security Bank, one of the state's largest banks. I did that for seven years. And while doing that, uh, Governor Beebe decided to appoint me to the State Highway Commission, where I became the second African-American on the State Highway Commission. The first was Rodney Slater, who later became a Secretary of Transportation under President Clinton. I did that for a few years and got back into the business again. And then uh, through a spirit of uh, frustration uh, with the system and institution of the city of Little Rock, I wanted to change things. I wanted to unify our city and focus on making it a better uh, city for our entire state and decided to run for uh, mayor uh, of my hometown. And ultimately, uh, we were uh, in a field of five candidates and won the general election, uh, but didn't reach the threshold of 40 percent. We only won with 38.2, and so we had to go into a runoff on December the 4th. And being an alpha man, it was great to win oh, on December the 4th. Hold, hold on right there. Hold on right, hold on right there. <laughs> why are you holding why, why, you're why, why, you're why, why you funky on? Why are you holding on? Why are you holding on? Behind why, something why, like that. Why were you holding behind, on? Behind, you said you, you, you an alpha brand. man. You, you well, behind, behind that, you got a brand. You got a brand. brand. Just, I just got a brand. I got a brand something. Get something brand new oh, over here. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, see, brand means something totally different. Oh. Well, whatever. Everybody started rolling up their sleeves for the listening audience. Uh, the Kappa and the Q in this uh, office yeah, started rolling yeah, up their sleeves. The no, to prove points in here. But I like to say, you know, Dr. King couldn't be who he is. Dr. King could be who he is without Ralph Abernathy. There you we, go. Really, we, we appreciate uh, everyone a part of the Divine Nine. And, and, ben- and, and Jesse Driver. And, right? and, and Jesse, Jesse Driver. Jesse and, <laughs> and, and Benjamin Mays. And Benjamin Just Mays. Keep on. Let's, we can keep it going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. but, but at any rate, though, Go ahead, but at any rate, though, I mean, as you proceeded down this path of history, and you already said that you weren't liking the way things were going, what did you see as what could be a better Little Rock? Well, what could be a better Little Rock? Little Rock has not reached its true potential. We're a great city, but we can be an even greater city. Uh, we have to move from being disconnected to, to connected with one another. I can remember sharing on the campaign trail, a certain area of town, 
a uh, more affluent area that I didn't even travel to until I was 22 years old. That was after wow. college. And so when you understand that there's a lack of intentional interactions, and intentional relationships right. uh, that that bodes outside of race and outside of culture. But it, it's a geographic. And when you don't have those type of interactions, it's not good for business because we all understand that uh, the true diversity is a value in that. And that value creates profitability. And so what I wanted to do is t- kind of stitch back our city together uh, through a quilt of cultures, a quilt yeah. of races, a quilt of uh, economics all, all the way together. And just really make certain that we understand we are the capital city. Not only are we a historic city for uh, the Little Rock Nine uh, and many others and how we have a, a special place sure. as it relates to the civil rights movement as well as education equality. Uh, but we are one of 50 unique cities in the United States. And we got to act like it. We got to resemble that. We have to reflect that. And that was the reason why we went. We created this campaign theme, and it's our internal why unifying our city and focused on true change to make us all better. How'd you How'd you edge uh, the other competitors out? Five is a pretty crowded yeah, really. field for a city the size of Little Rock. Well, one, we had a great team, and we wanted to make certain that uh, we were going to be uh, very professional, very pristine, be on message, uh, on time. Uh, and so that's number one. And we were, you know, being a millennial uh, generation and being a millennial candidate, uh, we understood that we were going to be the underdog. And so we had to make certain that when we wouldn't get our own press, we had to make our press. And so we made that press through the utilization of social media. And when I talk, I'm not just talking about Facebook and Twitter. It was Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, right. Snapchat, and even LinkedIn. And so we wanted to make certain everyone knew our message. And we had to make certain that we was going to be as visible as possible. But most importantly, not only uh, that, we wanted to have a true policy agenda that spoke to the people and that right. the people understood and then understood that message. And finally, probably even more importantly, is that we knocked on doors. Uh, and we made a, a point to make certain that we were going to slow get it down when you say that, though, because that's something a lot of people running for mm-hmm. office do not understand. It's more than just the speeches. You have to get out, get on your tennis shoes and knock on these doors. You got to talk to the people yeah. and the people will share with you. OK, hey, uh, we may think public safety is an issue, but it may be a specific thing within public safety. Once you knock on the doors and understand what the people are truly saying, how they're being affected. And if you're truly going to be a servant of the people, you have to know the people. And the only way to know the people is really get to them at the doorstep. I like and so said, we, we kind of. We knocked on uh, close to over a year and a half, somewhere close to thirty five to 40,000 doors. Hold, I want to hold that right there. I want to hold that point right there, Mr. Mayor. We got, we got to take a quick station identification. All right, we'll be right back here on Funky Politics with the one and only Mayor, the Honorable Mayor go. Frank Scott Jr. Don't get him confused with his daddy, Frank Scott Sr. <laughs> right here on Funky Politics, King powered by Rock. King of the, the Rock. Yeah. Network. The yeah. whole funk, nothing but the funk. The Chairman's Perspective. Hi, this is Lee Eric Smith. Let's take a look inside Shelby County government as we unleash some of the views of our very own Chairman of the Shelby County Commission, Van Turner. The Chairman's Perspective on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Kazookian.com, or your favorite podcast provider. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Funky Politics. More of what you're talking for. We're back with you right here on Funky Politics, powered by the Kazookian Network. We got the mayor, not the mayor, but the mayor in from the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, Frank Scott Jr. The mayor? Uh, well, that's just what I say. Your colloquialism. It's a colloquial. Yeah, oh, okay. I can't spell it, but that's we don't. How do we, it. we don't engage. Doc Ward. In, <laughs> no, we don't engage in colloquy. Doc Ward. Colloquy is not in. funky. <laughs> what is it? A little funky. Colloquy. Mister Mayor, we were talking just a little bit ago about. You knocking on all these doors, thirty five thousand, and we talked about the implications of being able to touch, reach out and touch folks. People want to see who that is that they want. Mm-hmm. They say want to represent them, right? And so, just to reach out and touch, you did those touches. You won. Let's talk about now. You are now the city mayor of the city of Little Rock. How is that working out? Uh, it, it's truly a blessing and an honor uh, to serve uh, our city, uh, to be a hometown kid, uh, to have this opportunity and this responsibility. Uh, to lead. And so we've been in office now uh, a little over 157, 158 days oh, wow. uh, in office. So not quite six months, but approaching six months. And right. so uh, right. we've experienced a ton, um, probably most more than uh, the previous administration ever uh, experienced in the 12 years that he was in office. 12? Uh, yeah, he was in office 12 right. years. Right. Right. Uh, and, and so uh, we've experienced a lot, uh, Some many things that one doesn't prepare for. Uh, we uh, changed our former government or, or technically adhered to a former government that was passed in 2007. Uh, we reorganized that for, that uh, that organizational chart, reorganized the government in City Hall uh, on January the 14th. 
uh, but also we experienced a, a, a tragic officer involved shooting yeah. uh, on my 53rd day in office and had to uh, then uh, move swiftly within 13 days to introduce Little Rock's and Arkansas's first critical incident video uh, to be accountable, to be clear and to be transparent. Right. Uh, and then in the meantime, we've uh, announced and recruited close to 620 jobs. Uh, and so we're excited about that. Had, got on the ball running. Uh, we, we brought in a new uh, manufacturing company from the Czech Republic of about 565 jobs, averaging about $25 an hour, where wow. Little Rock's per capita income. 25? Yeah, it, 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 Coming to check. Yeah, 25, oh, about $52,000 yeah. uh, average salary when Little Rock's per capita income is about 35 36 So right. we're excited. We're underway. That's underway. a win, dog. Yeah. That is a we're win. We're excited. You know what is so funny? When he says $25 an hour, new jobs in Czech Republic, I said every time we get one of these southern mayors here, I'm thinking about relocating to a different city. You can't, you can't change every city. Every <laughs> time we get a mayor I said it was the Birmingham here. mayor. <laughs> I said, no, Little Rock. I said, but what you're seeing now <laughs> in the south, uh, I, myself and uh, Mayor Lumumba from Jackson, Mississippi, yes. and, and Mayor Keisha Bottoms were uh, just in D.C. a couple weeks ago for the city's financial empowerment conference, uh, focusing on financial literacy and financial empowerment for right, the underbanked right, right. and unbanked. Uh, but what you're really seeing right now in the south and every – Deep South, large city. Uh, we're represented by a, a, a minority woman or, <laughs> or a minority man. <laughs> right, right, uh, right. But right. W- what you're seeing is what we call the the catalyst of the new South. Right, and I mean that's something that we've really been focused on here at Kazukian. But as far as you were saying, and I don't want to mull over this, you were saying that after on July, January, excuse me, 14th, you changed the way you all govern. Yes. Yeah, so, explain. Explain that. So I'll, I'll try to not to give you a, a tutorial of, of the life of Little Rock. So Little Rock <laughs> uh, cre- uh, originally, right. uh, up until 1956, 57, was a mayor, council, former government, right. similar to what the uh, city of Memphis has. Right. Uh, due to uh, some uh, racial history, due to some unionized activity, uh, the foremothers and forefathers of the Little Rock thought that we needed to move from a mayor, council, former government to what they called a businessman, former government, which was a city manager, former government. Right. Then, uh, uh, so from that point in time, uh, from 57 to 92, uh, we had different iterations of a city manager, former government, where all you had was city directors and the mayor was merely ceremonial. It was a ceremonial person right. where they passed a hat from city directors. Right. So I'm the first African-American elected mayor. Right. However, there have been two preceding mayors. Shackleford uh, was one. Shackleford was, was one. Shackleford? Uh, right. And Charles Bussey was right. the other. Uh, but they both were city directors. They were not Ooh, elected mayor. Right. Well, I see. They were just appointed from their peers. To become mayor was it 2007 when you all actually started electing? So it was two, 1992 was our first d- directly elected mayor, okay. Mayor Jim Daly, right. uh, and then in 2007 when Mayor Stodel was elected, he was elected as a part-time directly elected mayor. But he and some community group members said it's time to have a strong mayor, yeah. right. and so what they did was was change the law where we have a city manager and a strong mayor as a CEO with. Um, hiring authority with uh, veto authority with appointment authority and can tell the city manager and city attorney uh, to provide direction and do this. So basically it's a mayor council light right, right. form of government. Gotcha. You're listening to Funky Politics powered by the Kazuki Network. See that's why we call him the king of the rock. The king of rock. Because he's not, not, not necessary. Yeah, it's, 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 he's not the big elected. rock, but he, he, uh, he, he's the key, the big man of, on the rock. And he's of the people, for the people, by the people, absolutely. But now with that new profile, though, uh, and with you being in the capital city and the most diverse city and a city probably with the highest per capita income and a city with most of the benefits of the state, True. you being in this new profile, how do you what, – what positions does that put you in politically in terms of your ability to affect change throughout the entire state? Well – uh, being the the capital city's mayor uh, is strategic. Number one, right. it is powerful, but you want to make certain that you utilize that power uh, strategically and responsibly. Uh, so I definitely have a great relationship with the governor. Uh, anything that happens in Little Rock tends is going to have an effect on Arkansas. Right. Uh, so if we get education correct, uh, education is going to sure. be correct for the state. If we get sure. transportation or economics correct, because at the end of the day, many people when they think of Arkansas, they think first of Little Rock. And so we have to uh, handle that uh, with great responsibility. And that's the reason why we have uh, public safety being a top priority for us, uh, because uh, Little Rock has not had a good perception and branding from safety. Right. We just recently hired uh, our new police chief, who was a former uh, chief of police from uh, Norman and Lancaster by the name of Keith Humphrey. 
um, and, and but also economic development and education. We're working on a couple new things, uh, our Little Rock Education 2020 plan, where we're consolidating two school districts, very similar to wow. uh, what you guys have done in Memphis, uh, to uh, two school districts into one South Tread Rock. Light, we'll consolidate Tread lightly. Light. You see how that worked Tread out for us. Light, I understood. Sir. You were right. <laughs> lightly. lightly. Yes, sir, because I tell you, when you talk about taking two different districts, right, and you put them together, somebody out there is going to think they're, they're missing something. Not to, just tread like but, Tasha's an education uh, but the thing about guru. It, she knows is, that. But right, the thing right. about it is, though, is that a lot of what's happened here in the South with the separation, as you indicated, is the result of racism. Racism. And in order to mend those open wounds of separatism, sometimes you have to mend them. It's not that you mend them, it's how you do it. Right. And so, I mean, we, we definitely – uh, uh, appreciate and laud you for the efforts that you're making there, and you're continuing to make good strides in the office now. So, what what else do you see on the horizon for Little Rock in the future? Of start what you what you're doing. Now? So, what we're planning on doing right now, from a public safety standpoint, you're going to see. Uh, we've had some issues with no knock warrants and the usage of no knock warrants. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, so, our new chief of police and myself, we've gone through a review. Uh, you'll see shortly a, a new no knock warrant policy. Uh, we're also going to have a citizens review board uh, that oh, really? uh, wow. yeah that reviews uh, police misconduct, police brutality uh, going forward. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're instituting a red tape commission to make certain that everyone knows that Little Rock is open for business. So what we're going to do is literally um, streamline all of the archaic. Uh, policies that prevent <laughs> pro-development and pro-growth in our city, but do it in a managed way uh, to make certain that we do not create gentrification, but create more uh, mixed income uh, communities with, within our city to truly unite us together. Uh, but not, moving from that is, again, I go back to Little Rock Education 2020 plan. We just, uh, one of the campaign promises that we made on the campaigns because Little Rock has a huge, in our state, huge uh, grade level reading problem. And so if a right. child is not able to read by the time in the third grade, we understand that those downstream ripple effects are negative. And so what we want to right. do is partner with the school district, Actually, which we've done yeah. uh, to create a summer reading academy. And so that just recently started. Wow. Hold it right there. We got you. We have a lot of information, a little bit of show, (laughs) a lot of information, but a little bit of show. We'll be right back with uh, Mayor Frank Scott right here on Funky Politics, powered by the Kadukia Network. R&R on Sports is proud to be on Sirius XM. So what's R&R stand for? Real talk and relevant sports issues. It's racial and relative. We're brothers from the South. We can relate. R&R on Sports on the Katsukian Network. The whole world, nothing but the ball. And we are back and on the Funky Politics, powered by the Katsukian Network. And we have with us... The mayor from Little Rock, I can say we got the Lip Petite, but he the big man on the rock. Uh, Frank Scott, thank you for joining us in the studio. Well, thank you so much, the rainmaker. Yeah. The rainmaker. So here's 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 the thing that's been that I've been pondering. I keep saying to people, we are we are uniquely positioned over here in these great southern United States. They out there having hurricanes and and stuff in in the plains. They falling off the off the off into the ocean on the west coast. The east coast is cold. The Midwest is cold. But we nice and Southern and people are nice and we can't get folk to come here and do business with us because great urban cities with lots of possibilities are balancing a battle with crazy conservative supermajority Republican legislators. And that picture out to the rest of the country is not appealing. How are you battling that in your leadership in Little Rock? Well, one, we have to... um I kind of call it um, the three eyes. Mm-hmm. We have to be very intentional with our relationships uh, across the aisle. Uh, it's um, mm-hmm. one of those situations where we can't afford not to communicate with one another, irrespective of political party, uh, because at the end of the day, we have to get business done for our respective cities and our respective states. Uh, but then moving from intentionality is we have to understand intersectionality. Uh, of race, culture, faith, sexual orientation, and gender identity, uh, and how that effectuates uh, true change and drives policy for the overall profitability of a city and a state to be prosperous. Uh, And then finally is uh, moving from that intentionality to intersectionality, but that is inclusion. And to have an inclusion, inclusion creates value. Uh, and that value uh, shows up in a series of public safety, shows up in a series of quality of life, and shows up in a series of economics and education, which all bodes well uh, for residents not only to uh, survive in a city or in a state, but to thrive. 
But how do you manage that? I mean, you're, you're implementing meaningful social change now. And you've got historical states that have historically been sort of homogenous in their politics. And we know that in order for you to do a lot of things you're talking about, growing cities, bringing more people to work, creating jobs, e- education equality for all, that, Im- that involves making the city and the state accessible and the opportunities they're in for everyone. So how do you implement the real social change to the political change without yeah. – Ruffling the apple cart. Yeah. And here's how you do well, it. Well, no, with, with the ruffling it, but just tearing it up. Just <laughs> we don't mind if you're ruffling it, but well, as long as it happens, it's at the end of it day, over. how do you make that happen? And I, and I agree, as long as it happens, but I think also, too, uh, depending on your political affiliation, is if you're in the minority, right. you're still in the minority. You have to be very strategic on how you get something done to help the overall sure. people. Sure. And I think one of the things is that we're finding in Arkansas is, is focusing on rule number one that's follow the money. And so we're in a right. state. Uh, where you know one of the the largest corporations is Walmart, and so mm-hmm. I, I can think back to two or three years ago when there were these different type of and I can't think of the a, the true meaning of the acronym, but these RIFRA laws as it relates yeah. to uh, diversity and inclusion right. within right. Um, uh, same sex marriages and things of that nature uh, for the LGBTQIA community. Uh, and it came down to a real business model that uh, you had Walmart literally come out in support. Uh, because it was good for business. Not only was it the right thing to do, but it was good for business. I think many times we had to focus on how the uh, particular social agendas or divisive social agendas have a negative effect on the <laughs> prosperity of a city and for a state. Wow. Mr. Mayor, what does the success of Little Rock and going going forward? What does that look like? And and can you carry the entire state of Arkansas? Because we've already talked to. And before I ask you that, let me, let me go ahead and say this is funky politics. So you can just say it. You got another mayor here in eastern Arkansas, and that is, uh, of course, Marco McClendon, Mayor mm-hmm. McClendon of West Memphis. Right. They've just had this huge two hundred fifty million dollar investment just drop in his lap here with with what's happening at uh, at the uh, Southland Gaming. How does that get connected to Little Rock, and also brings the state up two or three extra notches? You know, in terms of economic development and and all boats rising. Oh, I agree. Marco's doing a phenomenal job, and you're right. He's getting this new windfall right now. Oh, so wow. is the— uh, And he's happy, too. He's happy. I've seen him. <laughs> but also, as you think about West Memphis, you also have to think about Pine Bluff, and you have sure. uh, a black woman mayor by the name of Sher- sure. uh, Cheryl oh, Washington. Oh, we're going right. to talk to her, too. And Sorry. she, too, yes. is getting a windfall with a new uh, uh, a new casino as well. And so one of the things that we do uh, as far as mayors, we all communicate, number Great. one. Uh, but not moving from that communication is to understand from an Arkansas standpoint is uh, the highest traveled uh, interstate in Arkansas, which is also in Tennessee, is right. Interstate 40. That's right. Uh, and it intersects in Little Rock along with Interstate 30, which is in the top 10. Right. And so uh, from a Little Rock perspective that we're, kind, we're, we're literally in the center and our outspokes go to everyone. And so what's good in Little Rock is going to help. Uh, the, everyone who is connected to us within our entire state. And so, again, it goes with communication, goes with coordination, uh, but it goes, again, uh, to make certain that we are all speaking from the same tune on on economics. Pine Bluff, West Memphis, Little Rock. Man, what's happened in Arkansas? People woke, awaken and say, you know what? We can trust black leadership. We, it's good. But I'm going to add something to you. What you you said Pine Bluff, West Memphis, and right. Little Rock are all uh, black mayors, but Fort Smith, Arkansas. Fort Smith. Which is the second largest city uh, in Arkansas is also wow. led by uh, former state rep, but now uh, Mayor George McGill. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, well, I, I I'm excited I mean, about and, and, and but let's also you know Little Rock is fifty fifty, uh, black white, but George S McGill, I think the black population is maybe ten percent. Whoa, in yeah. Fort Smith, Fort Smith, and but it's it's a city of eighty thousand. Yeah, but therein mm-hmm. lies but therein lies the paradox though, mm-hmm. because. You've got all those you know, African-American leaders, African-American leadership. But then you also have a, a state that was overwhelmingly supportive of Republican leadership. And I only say Republican leadership because Republican leadership is fine. But the new xenophobia race baiting leadership is not. So how do you, how does the, how do the causes that you, the other mayors in Arkansas, the other African-American mayors of large cities in the South, which there are several, how does that cause and that call for diversity emanate over the xenophobia for the citizens that are coming up now. How does that social change? How do you all collectively create that social change? Because the South is is rising. What it's going to rise to is... Well, I think think it's totally uh, the responsibility upon those of us that are elected, uh, first and foremost, to do our job. Mm. I think so many times we, we get caught up 
right. and, and focusing on national politics. Right. Uh, but as my grandfather told me, my only job right now is to pick up the trash, pick up the trash. catch the robbers, <laughs> and put out the fires. Anything else I do is because I love the people. Keep and, the and so and so, me, and so many wow. people are focused on these other things. But we as right. mayors, we're not. I mean, we literally have to make certain that because at the end of the day, uh, my constituent is is a Trump supporter and an Obama supporter. That's true. And right. I got to treat them just the same right. and, and focus on what's going on at City Hall and not what's going on at the state capitol. And then many times pe- we are drug into national spotlight and sure. national issues that, sure. A, we can't even control. And I, I tend just to focus on, on my job now. But if you focus on your job now and you have a true inclusive agenda, it will catch fire nationally. Let well, me I- say this. Uh, he, he's got, we got to get him out of here. But let me say this. You got something burning. Go ahead, Tasha. It's, you got to let the rain. You got to let the rain. Most of America still remembers banging in Little Rock, so y'all can right. Yeah, come. Yeah, well, you get mean, your face. You mean the HBO most, special? Most of America still remembers yeah. a narrative that was created around this banging in Little Rock. Right. Yeah. You had President Clinton, and Hillary Clinton, and their impact right. on uh, mass incarceration and all of these other kind in of the issues. Shadow so, of the Capitol. So people yeah. think about all Little Rock in a national spotlight, probably mm-hmm. in a way that I think most of us may not pay attention to. But the one thing that we over here on the other side of the bridge are talking about is like, what that miracle, what that medical marijuana doing though? <laughs> <laughs> we go, we're gonna let you in on the. On the, on the you gonna let me in on the weed? <laughs> what you gotta do to get a card? Weed? That's the weed we try to figure out. What you gotta do to get a card? Go see a doctor. Well, you, you go see Doctor Archie Hearn. <laughs> a Shout out, out Doctor Hearn. Where have you at, Doc? <laughs> we got something coming. You come a little right. And what that talk. means potentially for yeah. revenue. And again, go, it's go a, it's another tax base for us, and it's and it's legal, and it will be fully operable in our city. Wow. Let me say something. We don't oftentimes get a chance to sit with young, young, just robust folks that look like us who are running major entities like you are in Little Rock. But I'm proud of you. Memphis, not Memphis born, but Memphis bred through the University of Memphis, no doubt. Right. But uh, let me tell you something, man. You are you are a shining star in not only the state of Arkansas, but really around the country. And, And we look to see bigger, bigger, bigger things come out. I can see the governor of Arkansas at some point. Just you I can see it <laughs> happening. That. I can see it happening. We got to let you get out of here. We're right here on Funky Politics. We have had a wonderful conversation well, with Well, thank the you so much, D.C., Doc, and Tasha. I really do appreciate you all for this opportunity. Again, it's just great to be back at home in my second home uh, and to be a part of Funky Politics. All right. We appreciate you. You tell them old six friends of yours that we said we'll see them later on. But anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back here with some closing thoughts on oh, Funky six. Politics powered by the Kazuki Network. More of what you're talking for. Riffin on Jazz. I'm Howard Robertson, one of your hosts for Riffin on Jazz. Riffin is your weekly visit with friends where we dive all in to that classic African American art form called jazz. So don't miss Riffin with me and my man Melvin Massey every week on your favorite broadcast and podcast platforms. Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! The whole pop, nothing but the ball. You're listening to Funky Politics powered by the Kazookia Network. And I've been told sometimes that we get a little long-winded. So as we close this show out, I'm just going to put it to you just like this. Real right and funky, that's what we do. This show's more funkier than a fresh hot zoo. And now we're done, so I'm going to get out of sight. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. Good night. Is that good enough? That was pretty good, but... but, I, yo, but I, I, that's it. You can't yeah, say that's it. funkier than that's a zoo. It. In a zoo. Ain't I'm, not going to, I'm not going to equate the fucking zoo, zoo in a with zoo. my good friend, the Reverend, Wright, the Reverend no, Doctor you Frank said Scott you Jr., take too long, so the mayor I just of Little Rock. I got in, I got in, and I got out. I, just, I want people to know, though, that <laughs> mayor, mayor Scott, hold on. Mayor Scott told you, he already told Tasha to talk to Dr. Hearn you over like there about right, the You like the zoo, He said, get your car from Dr. Hearn over there. But he also talked about how Little Rock is is getting it right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. How it's getting it right. And we're talking about a 50-50 city, right? Yeah. We're not talking about some super majority after America. The most important this thing, young man, I think, is he's on top of it. But the know. most I'm important so thing he said about it as far as the South and with the prominence and preeminence of African-American leadership is that, is that everyone should focus on doing the job of providing the services and making the city livable and desirable for all of the citizens and those who visit. Is that low-hanging that fruit? Thing. Is that low-hanging fruit? No, it's not really it's low-hanging fruit, fruit. It's just fruit. Mm-hmm. And some some fruit is good fruit. It's good fruit. 
Good. Some fruit you have to climb the ladder to get. Yeah. Some is low hanging. I'm a but it's fruit. At the top of the tree, you ain't gonna never get it. Let's get out Some of here. Some of it you're not. You, 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 let's get out of here. See, you took me too long. I, I, you took me too long. I got. You took me too long. I gotta get. On, I, gotta, I gotta get on the bus to Little Rock. I gotta go see Doctor Hearn. So let's get go. on the bus. Yes, sir. And have a good ride. And next time we'll see you. I might be high. I will never leave rhyming up to you again. So in the meantime, as always, we suggest that you keep it real. Keep it right. You got to keep it funky. And we'll see y'all next time on Funky Politics. Funky Politics, hosted by Daryl D.C. Catron, Tasha Downey, and Marcus M.D. Ward. Recorded at Kitsukian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kitsukian. Kitsukian.